Hello, you join us at the impressive Lime Park in Cheshire, just on the edge of the Peak District, the first location in this year's search to find Britain and Ireland's most outstanding artistic talent. And this time, we're heading outside. Eight amateur and professional artists will have just four hours to produce a painting that impresses our three demanding judges and claims a place in the semi-final. So sit back and get ready to enjoy some really great art. Welcome to a brand new series of Sky Art's Landscape Artist of the Year. Over the next eight weeks, we're setting up home in spectacular National Trust properties up and down the country, delving into one of the great genre of art history in a quest to discover the next Constable, Turner or Hockney. Over 1,000 artists applied, and those considered by our judges as the very best have been invited to compete in the heats. I think it'd be good to just do that square foot of grass yes. over there. <laughs> Each week, eight different artists will be given the chance to paint these inspiring landscapes. All of them with one goal, to win a £10,000 commission to paint one of the National Trust's most beautiful views, Flatford in Suffolk, made famous by Constable himself. Yes, that's fantastic. Well, it's a start. But to make it through to the semi-final, they'll have to impress our expert judges. Award-winning artist Taishan Schierenberg, independent curator and art historian Kathleen Soriano, and contemporary art specialist Kate Bryan. So that's the definite. Yeah, that's definite. It's just these two we've got to fight yeah. over. But there's a twist. Up to 50 more artists are coming along to each of the heats to try their hand as a wild card. And if any catch the eye of the judges, they could see themselves in the semi-final too. It's people doing something that's very personal to them, but doing it in a community. It's a beautiful combination. Whether they're painting... This is cow manure. Yes, yeah, fresh cow manure from this morning. Where did you get the cow? Sketching. Are you a sufferer with nerves? Uh, a little bit. Because you have an enormous bucket. I wonder if that's oh. in case you're overcome with no. nausea. Or printing. We can't let him finish it. Here we go, here we go. He did it. Only one artist can claim the title of Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year. In each heat, the selected artists are a mix of both amateur and professional. Today, there are two amateur artists, Chris Robinson and Tim Galton. I'm very much looking forward to meeting the judges today. I have great respect for them. And six professional artists, Venetia Sims, Adabanji Aladi, Marta Fakula Mack, Sophie Levi, Sean Williams and Jamie Hagman. I'm a mountain artist, so um, I'm going to have to adapt to painting uh, reflections and buildings. The judges select the artists purely on their talent from a digital submission of one of their landscapes. So today, they're seeing the real thing up close for the first time. Well, goodness me, who would have thought when you put out the challenge landscape, you would get something so varied as this. How does this match up to what you saw in digital form? It's a dry point. Dry point. Yeah. There's some very beautiful marks, like the coppice in the back, which is a very mm. inventive mm. kind of... I don't know how it's done. It's got some great colour, really interesting art. Oh, I think it's a lovely piece. And quite brave with that sort of completely empty sky in the mm. background. Yes, they stopped in good time. Yeah. They didn't overdo it. Right, this one? When we looked at the portraiture before, we always were concerned that those people who were photo and hyper-realists wouldn't be able to create a portrait in the time. But I'm also looking at the passages that aren't in the snow here, for example, and they're actually quite loose and free. So I think this person possibly has an ability to do both elements quite comfortably. I think I should point out that there are two yes. tiny, yeah. tiny yeah. figures yeah. At the, at there to give some sense of perspective. Is it just showing off, do you think? Maybe, I don't know. I, I am impressed by it. I can't help but be. No. Well, you're meant to be. <laughs> what a deal of paint on here. Goodness. A lot of palette work. I don't remember it? it being so blocky. Yeah. Well, it's like the slate, isn't it? I mean, the paint is like the slate. Yeah. I don't know what to make of it because it feels a bit too formulaic to keep using the same little blocky squares everywhere. I wish they could loosen up a bit, make some parts much looser and allow other parts to be much tighter. And finally, a very delicate one. Mm. I think they love the tree and I think they just thought, this tree is sublime, the tree will be 
what seduces people. I like the fence, actually. I like this kind of like dirty, grubby, unfinished bit there. And I'm quite intrigued by them that they would do that when the rest of it is so finished. And given that they don't have much time today, I would hope that this artist, who is proficient, could undo themselves a bit. Mm. I do think that they will be very happy today because they've got trees and a building. So yes, they've had yeah. some practice. <laughs> they really. start with an advantage. Yeah. So we have high hopes of them. All facing the same view, the artists have been asked to paint a composition of Lime Hall and its reflecting lake. Originally a hunting lodge, the hall was transformed into a mansion in the middle of the 16th century. But such a splendid view isn't to everyone's liking. I think heading that way, you're looking across the building, it's a bit more pleasing. You're a little bit lower as well down there, maybe. Maybe this is my mountain eye coming into it. I think it's lovely. I'm going to focus, though, on this side, because I like the greens and I, I like trees and this bit of water is nice. Water I could do without, but it's there, can't ignore it. And, and the building is quite tricky, but that's the challenge, I think. If not, it's going to end up in the lake. <laughs> Artists, I hope you're ready to paint one of Cheshire's grandest houses. You have four hours to complete your work, so good luck. Your time starts now. Deciding which aspects of a landscape to feature is a matter for each artist's individual style. But for one, his day job could be influential. You're an architect. Yes. And you've, it turns out the composition today includes uh, a, a, building. Big, a big house. A building, yeah. It, does that give you a, no. an advantage? Absolutely no. not. Really? Why not? Because the last thing I want to do is draw and paint buildings. All I'm doing is seeing an Italian building with ionic columns, and I've seen so many of them in my life. <laughs> oh, God, I've got, now I've got to paint one. <laughs> Chris Robinson is from Kew in London, a self-taught artist he likes to paint outside no matter the weather. His submission painting is an impressionistic watercolour of the Chilterns in Oxfordshire. It epitomises for him the English landscape. Theoretically, Chris, you could not draw the house. Big risk, Frank, I think. Do you think that they, the judges might be impressed by your um, you so? courage? Though? You could avoid it, though. You know them better than I do. Well. <laughs> Yeah, I think they'd hate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad, thanks. You've set yourself the most incredible challenge, because I'm guessing your work normally takes a little bit longer than the four hours you've got? You've guessed right, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Hageman lives in Fort William, Scotland. He divides his time between climbing mountains and painting them. His submission piece is of the mountain Blencathra in the Lake District, and it took more than two months to complete. I've done a very quick sketch, which is fairly rubbish, but will help me. I, don't know, I quite like the simplicity of it. Mm, and okay. what's going to be interesting is to see how detailed you're going to be able to become, yeah. because I know that's where you feel more comfortable. I'm going to focus on an area of okay. detail. Just, I think this would be a little bit more of a demonstration. To show I can, okay. uh, maybe the whole painting won't be finished. We like a sense of promise. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're trying to impress the judges by painting Lime Park, not all the artists are exclusively landscape painters. Do you have you done portraits? Yes, yes, I do portraits, yeah. Have you ever had one in Nashville, though? Yes, yeah, I had one in... Well, I've had three times in the BPE. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, one absolutely one. spectacular. <laughs> A very narrow-faced um, older gentleman. Oh, uh, yes, yes, we are to Cliff. <laughs> very nice to meet you in the... Oh, of course. Sophie Levi is from London and divides her time between landscapes and portraits. Her submitted painting depicts the rocket-shaped spire of All Souls Church in London. This was one of Sophie's first paintings using a circular canvas, rather than the traditional landscape format. I've only painted once on a round canvas. Um, it's a completely different compositional sort of uh, problem, isn't it? It is, it is, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't have the straight edges. You get, it, does it mean sometimes you can use it as a way of bending space? Yeah. Partly the bend comes from just being greedy and wanting to fit, in a, fit a lot in, and so you have to squeeze it in. And partly because it's in the round, can make it work compositionally. To create a landscape within the four-hour time limit, one artist, who usually works on a large scale, has had to find ways of adapting his style. 
I did some trial runs in a four hour period and they were disastrous really. So I thought maybe just today in this four hours, maybe I'd be a bit more confident working this scale. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Seems like you've downscaled everything. I mean, these are little milk for my cup of tea yeah. and then these are sort of medicine packets which you're mixing colours in. Yeah. They're quite handy that mixing up acrylic in those and sticking a bit of foil over it rather than wasting, you know, acrylic doesn't come cheap, you no, know. No, none of this does, so. no. Sean Williams is from Sheffield and studied painting and printmaking at Sheffield Hallam University. His submission painting is of a new building development near his father's home in Nantwich. Today, the size of canvas isn't the only aspect of his work he's changed. I've abandoned acrylics and I'm going to go for watercolour pencils with a bit of watercolour. So this is presumably a technique that you're familiar with and you've used many times to Not work quickly. OK. No, no. This has given me a kind of get-out card. If it's no <laughs> good, I think, well, I don't work like that anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> This year, adding a new element to the competition, we invited 50 more artists from all over the country to Lime Park to try their luck as a wild card. On a first come, first served basis, and no matter what their medium, experience, or age, they're here to try and impress. Painting with all these other artists is always inspiring and a bit intimidating as well sometimes. I love the wild card area. It feels like a sort of fantastic community of artists and the people just doing what they love. It's so refreshing just to go back to people's pure, unbridled passion for art. And if they catch the judge's eye, they could be going through to the semi final. You've brought the whole studio with you, eh? Uh, I <laughs> That is fantastic. The abstracts get a bit of violence sometimes. Yeah, but that, you could hang that in an art gallery. That's a beautiful thing. Now, you're still at school. That's right. You're doing A-levels? Yeah, I'm studying Art Foundation next year, hopefully. I like nature. I'm a naturist. OK. So, when I like... When you say you're a naturist, it doesn't mean you take your clothes off. Natural thing. Yes. This, this nature. Yes. Not that kind of. No. <laughs> There are still three hours of the challenge remaining. But only one of the artists can claim a place in the semi-final. Bit of a slow start, a bit of a hesitant start. If I was a racehorse, I'm a couple of lengths off the back of the pace, I think, at the moment. I was trying to work out the last time I painted the building, and I think it was probably 2007 in Venice. <laughs> so, no, and I haven't been practising buildings. I'm not over the moon about where the painting is at the moment. It, it needs quite a lot of work, basically. Um, so I'm, I'm just ploughing on. At Lime Park in Cheshire, we're one hour into the first heat of our new competition. All of our artists are concentrating on their composition of Lime Hall. And one has quite an audible way of staying focused. If you watch it well enough, you'll see it, boy, you know? Just get into this. Just, just, just take your time, baby. Right. Just, you know. And Angie, hey. I hate to uh, interrupt your personal <laughs> commentary. Oh, no, no, sorry, I'm a bit of a I talk to myself, yeah. Is it true that you do sketches of people on, on the bus? Bus, train tube, yeah. It's one of the ways I interact with people, because I don't want to be quiet in the, in the tube, so, yeah, I get attention, and people say, what do you do, why do you do that, blah, blah, blah. Adabanji Alade is from Kent, and alongside painting landscapes and people for a living, he's also a motivational speaker. His landscape of the circus in Bath was made in one six-hour sitting and features a subject he's very passionate about. I love trees, yeah. I see them as human beings, so they're creepy, they're, you know, some are, like, happy, sometimes the weeping willows are sad, so... How is that, how is that, though? I am slightly obsessed with, with trees. With trees as well. Oh. I have hugged trees at 1.30am uh, in the morning. My day. Tree hugging, oh, OK. There you go. I'm, uh, and I'm... you're a big man. I mean, you could, <laughs> you could do the circumference of quite a sturdy trunk. I have to stick with saplings. <laughs> Canvas, brushes and paint are usually part of an artist's kit, but they're not the only way to capture a landscape. 
I have some dry point needle here. It's very sharp, even gentle marks. They will, they show, will up. show up, they will print. From How can you see what you're doing there? You have to feel it? I have to feel it, but that's why I made this drawing, so I know where I am. Marta Vakula Max studied art in Krakow before moving to Dublin, where she now has work in the National Gallery of Ireland's permanent collection. Her landscape is an abstract representation of her favourite view in Wicklow, made by etching onto copper before printing. The print you entered with, it looked like some marks had been painted on. No, this kind of effect uh, is made by uh, sandpaper. This gives you nice, really subtle tones of greys. But you can't... I can I see... I can see, no. you can see, I can see how you would see the marks you're going to yes. make with your drawing, but with the tones you've got to go... No. You've got to, it's experience, it's you know experience, what's going on. Experience, okay. yes, yes. You're fearless. <laughs> I'm fearless. <laughs> You've recently become a full-time artist, made the plunge. Um, yeah, well, I finished art school last summer, so I decided to not get a normal job and yeah. try and make it work. Anisha Sims from Salisbury studied portraiture at Heatherley's College in London before furthering her training in Florence. Her landscape is the view towards Albania from her aunt's house in Corfu. You've got a lot blocked out here. You've taken the distance away and you're right up there next to it. Yeah, I thought, to be honest, it's such a sort of amazing strong building that's the focus and I want the reflection sort of running into the viewer mm. and I think that could look quite nice. Mm. I was wondering if anyone was going to take on that challenge. I got warned today, and they said, when you talk to Tim, don't, yeah. don't mention clouds, because he'll go on for ages. That's right, yeah. yeah. But there were, no, there, there were no interesting clouds today. But you know a cumulonimbus from a... a Fairweather cumulus? Yes. <laughs> yes, from that. I hate those Fairweather cumuluses, because where are they when you're in trouble? <laughs> Tim Galton is a business analyst from St Albans. His love of art began as a child when his father, a landscape artist, used to take him on painting trips. His landscape is of the Green Bridge of Wales on the Pembrokeshire coast. Painted in thick oil, he used his utensil of choice, the palette knife. What is it about that sort of block style? Knife. Yeah. My inspiration at the moment is very much the very material nature of my subject matter. So, you know, be it tree bark or the, the texture of a rock, those substances can best be described by use of a, a thick, loaded palette knife. I like the sound of a loaded palette knife. That's what it that is. It sounds yeah. like something that could do a bit of damage. <laughs> <laughs> With a possible place in the semi-final, the wild cards are embracing working so close to each other. I love the fact you've included all the artists because it's such a pretty scene. But the building is not bright red. Yet. No. <laughs> the earth right. will be the building to start with. And then I'll, I'll point in some windows. And then it'll be about 10 o'clock at night. You've <laughs> only got four hours. And then we throw you out. Yeah. Everyone sort of got 100 mile an hour and I just like, you know, it's a long day, I can just ease through it. You know why, though? That's because you're cool. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or lazy. <laughs> or lazy. It's a very yeah. fine line. It is a it? fine line. You just stick with what you believe. Yeah. Is that your phone? Yeah, he's my phone. Oh, see, you're popular as well. I hate you. <laughs> We've got a watercolourist, and he's uh, been a very beautiful picture of the house. There's somebody drawing in charcoal at the top. It's got a great light to it, which is unusual for a drawing. There's a young girl. Her colour's a bit grubby, but it's a fantastic piece of painting. There are a handful of good artists, so it should be quite easy to find a winner. I'm becoming more and more fascinated by the painting of water. Is it some mysterious art? That... And when it's right, it's really enticing, oh, isn't it's, it? <laughs> it's beautiful when you see it. <laughs> the thing about water, all the edges are sharp. Mm. So if you get the reflection and then those ripples crisply, you get the tone of the reflection, which is slightly darker than the object that's been reflected. You get those general elements right, it, it cons the eye into believing it's water. Can I ask you one of my, my stupid questions? Yeah. Would you turn your canvas and paint it? Do you know what I mean? So then yeah. you're painting the building the right way up. 
but it doesn't quite work like that. If we look at the reflection, it's changing. The water is simplifying it at the same time as it's reflecting it. So all the shadows are being elongated as they come down. You yeah. can see that now, can't we? In fact, the water does a sort of an abstract yeah. painting of the building. Mm. It's better than the house. It is fantastic, yeah. That tree's pretty good as well. Yeah, that. That's I great. didn't even see that now. <laughs> I love walking with Stop you. It. You see everything. <laughs> Look, that man's red jacket is reflected. Can oh, you see that? yes, I can. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Our eight heat artists are battling it out for a place in the semi-final. And they have just over two hours left to impress. There's incredible detail here. I want to do the reflection next, because I think that's quite important. Bit of foreground, two hours time. Call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to print yellow first. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm probably a little bit behind um, because there's a lot of canvas to cover still. The house is looking a little bit weedy and that's uh, it's not how it should be. So uh, a little bit worried. Here at Lime Park in Cheshire, the artists who have been painting for two hours are halfway through their challenge. Yeah, exciting. But do the judges agree? So Chris, the architect, he has captured an incredible sense of mood already. It might not be necessarily the mood of this place, but it's a very evocative piece. It doesn't feel like here. No, but I don't want it to feel like here. I'm here, I can see it, I could take a photograph. I mean, it's his job to take artistic licence. What about Tim? We may get there, but it feels a bit slight to me at the moment. I thought he wasn't going to get there at all. Mm. I mean, he reduced this building to this grubby little grey frontage. Mm. And then as he got there, I thought he had a little something that was happening, and just now he started to produce the reflection yeah. and also the texture of the building. I'm kind of excited. Adabanji. He raced off this. I, just, yeah, I can't believe the speed <laughs> with which he got everything in place. And the water was fabulous and done with very little. Jamie. I like Jamie's. I think the colour choices are really unusual. It has no light in it. You have the elements, but you don't get a sense of light coming from anywhere onto the elements. And the colour scheme he's gone for is quite glacial, yeah. even though this isn't at all. But, I mean, I just think, I don't think we can punish someone who paints snowy mountains <laughs> for bringing a bit of that to a posh building. Well, I think he has to compromise. The mountain wouldn't come to Jamie, so Jamie should come <laughs> to the mountain. Oh, Frank, you have been so excited <laughs> to say that. <laughs> This is amazing, oh, wow. You nearly finished. Oh, well, a long way to go. It looks like, <laughs> but because of our different looks styles, good to yeah. Me. Been going at a steady pace so far. This is a wonderful bunch, and everyone's way of doing it's different. So, wish I was ahead, but can't do anything about that. Chris, I just heard you say something, which was, I've started to fiddle and that's bad. Yeah, because I had originally got what I wanted with a few brush strokes. The colours are deadening now because I've started to put one too many washes over No, but it, wait so. a minute, when you stand back, this cloud is terrific, so don't meddle with that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> originally used as a hunting ground, Lime Park is known for its 16th century hall and reflecting lake. But there's another building that has become synonymous with the local skyline. You can see the cage from miles and miles around. Its primary function was as a, a hunting lodge, a viewing tower, if you like, for the ladies to watch the lords hunting and then they'd all come back here at the end and, uh, and have a banquet. Originally a timber construction, it's thought the cage was remodelled into its current form in the 1720s and 30s by the same architect that designed the house, Giacomo Leone. However, the origins of how it got its name are shrouded in mystery. The cage possibly got its name because it was used as a, a holding cell, a prison of sorts for uh, poachers held here overnight waiting for the local constabulary to come from Macclesfield and cart them away in the morning. So I guess that might be one of the reasons why it became known as the cage. After many years standing derelict, other than being used by the Home Guard during the Second World War, 
The cage has now been restored and sits resplendent atop the moorland of Lyme Park. Locally, it is very much a, an iconic landmark. It really makes you realise you, you've been transported back into a historic landscape. Phil Stokes has devoted his working life to Lyme Park, so as a reward for his dedication, today we'll be giving him the chance to pick his favourite painting for himself. You grew up not far from here. Not far, just in the middle of Stockport. And I grew up not far from here too, so I know this place, but I don't know it like you do. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you first came here? I was 15 when I came here to serve an apprenticeship in uh, carpentry and joinery. Four-year apprenticeship. It wasn't just about teaching you your trade. They taught you how to apply that to Lyme Park and, and care for the buildings on the estate. Lyme is famous for one particular television programme, Pride and Prejudice, yeah. with Colin Firth coming out of the water. Yeah. It's legendary. Did it happen in that pond? No, no, it was quite a murky little pond further back in the estate. You're breaking a thousand <laughs> hearts. You're breaking a million hearts. I was reluctant to tell you. Right, you get to choose one of the paintings for yourself. Well, I've had a quick look round, yeah, on my way past, and there is some stunning work going on. So. Right, well, we'll let them finish before you make your choice, but once you make your choice, it's yours. OK, thank you. Our eight artists are battling it out for a place in the semi-final, but will any of the wild cards be joining them? Blimey, it's positively vibrating with energy. <gasps> Fabulous. To be in with a chance of making it to the semi-final, the judges have to agree on just one wild card to put forward. Hello, Celia. Don't want to interrupt you, you're still busy working. I think I'm nearing finished. No. Well, you've made something that's quite different. It's got a very sort of architectural feel to it, and we love the light that you captured coming from the orange room. We'd like to put you through as the wild card today to the next <laughs> round. Oh my gosh. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh, Brilliant. Well done, you man. Nice one. Well done. Yeah. Celia is now the first person to join a pool of wild cards. After all six heats are complete, one will be chosen to go through to the semi final. I'm slightly happier than I was before, but that wasn't difficult. Um, yeah, it's just the time thing, it's an issue. I was almost hoping you'd be struggling more so I could say to you, you've got a mountain to climb, but you, you haven't got a mountain to climb, you've got, I think, a, a hillock. 30 minutes remain in this first heat of Landscape Artist of the Year. This is print number five, is that right? This is print number five. The yellow was a little bit too light. OK. But the, I'm happy about the black, but the yellow didn't work out. Okay. So I need to do it again. The building still isn't strong enough, and that's what I'm worried about. That's what's going to let it down. Are you going to touch this, do you think, or not? Um, maybe just put dashes of flowers, just small little white dashes. Yes. Those are the little kind of bits and pieces that might just... One of the dangers when you get to this stage yes. is to do too much. I know, I know, it's deadly. You've got to know when to stop. I have to. Here at Lime Park, there are just five minutes left in this first heat of Landscape Artist of the Year. I'm going as fast as I can. Yes, yes. I've missed out all these arches here. You've got the spirit of the building. Good, that's nice. You can use the, that the, if the judges uh, ask you why you haven't finished it. I like it. There isn't enough definition in it. I know I'm panicking because you start doing stupid things. How long have I got? There's no choice, is there? It's, uh, I'm just trying to make it work last minute. Another couple of months, and this would look splendid. Artists.
artists, your time is up. Please put down your materials and step away from your work. Sheltered from the rain and before the judges look at the final landscapes, Phil Stokes, who has worked at Lime Park since he was 15, will now choose his favourite painting to keep as a thank you for his commitment. So, artists, can you please turn your easels? Recognise it? I do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the way the house is just nestled into the landscape on yeah. that one. If you've got a big circular spot on your wall, Mm -hmm. yeah. This could be the one for you. That's quite foreboding, that backdrop to that one. It was a foreboding kind of a day, though, wasn't mm. it, skywise? So do you feel you have your winner? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, we, we talk quite a lot about um, spirit of place here, and I think the one that's captured that for me the most is this first one. To help them decide which artist will claim a place in the semi-final, the judges first whittle down the eight to three. I'm really pleased with this one. I think the scale of the picture sort of really loosened them up rather than that tight submission and fantastic sort of reflection in the light and attention to detail. It's gorgeous. And fantastic sense of space as well. He really has that sweeping edge of the water and the building the distance. No, it's really... I mean, I think it just looks like it's easy to him. It's amazing. To be shortlisted will be a double blessing, but for now, I'm really pleased. Um, I can tell my kids at home that um, someone chose my painting um, and he works here and it's going to be with him forever. It's not quite as dynamic as I hoped it was going to be. And I think the sky was much more dynamic earlier yeah. on in the day, which is a pity that she's lost that. It hasn't quite got that dynamism and energy that the other one had. And, and somehow the relationship between the different elements doesn't work as well as it did in the other, which sort of completely took you around yeah. the picture. The inventiveness of the little drips and stuff, it just it makes the water very watery. It's any word I can think of. There's not much there, is there? It's, it's quite soft, but then I like the undone architectural drawing. I like the aggressiveness of these trees. It's unusual. Yeah. It went OK at the beginning, and then it just sort of died away at the end. So I'm feeling a bit deflated. He's got great monumentality, that's why I was surprised. I just really didn't think he was going to make it because he took so long in the building. I didn't like this painting until he started making the reflection of his building. It was a bit rougher, the way the water plays around with the sky, it's great. I actually like the reflection so much, I wish he'd painted the building like yeah. that. I think this is quite wonderful, actually, because he knew he had to compromise. He couldn't paint the way he normally did in his submission at Fantastic Mountain. But I think he's created something quite fabulous. I feel like it's sort of David Lynch meets Tim Burton by way of surrealism. These very strange colours, which I thought lended a sort of lightlessness mm. to it, but it gives it a very strange brooding atmosphere. I think it's fantastic. When it worked, it suddenly took me with it. I think it's a phenomenal piece of painting. That experience was terrifying. <laughs> I didn't have enough time to complete my painting. The subject matter was something completely different for me. But I produced a, a painting at the end of it, and it's it's all right. <laughs> I'm having trouble deciding between the sort of more graphic style works on e-paper yeah. style. Whereas that is so strange. I think it's fantastic. It stands alone, and it's really cool. So that's a definite. Yeah, yeah. that's definite. It's just these two we've got to fight yeah. over. But only three can make the shortlist. The first artist to go through is Adabangiladi. The second artist is Tim Gold. And the third artist to go through is Jamie Hagman. to all the 
artists who didn't quite make it. Well done. Yes, very well done. I was happy about the drawing uh, at the beginning, but then for some reason I couldn't get the print right, so I am a bit disappointed. I think it's been a fantastic experience. I don't feel down, I don't feel indifferent. It's great, and if anybody else um, sees anything like this come along and they're potential artists, I suggest they have a go. Before they decide on today's winner, the judges chat to Adabanji, Jamie and Tim about the work they completed today and their submission landscape. Did you work out your composition quite quickly and do you normally paint this fast? If I was to do this on my normal basis, I would do it over three to five sittings. But there's a little bit of adrenaline and, <laughs> <laughs> and pressure and um, so I kind of pushed myself a little bit. That's why I'm drained at the moment, yeah, yeah so yeah. I felt like you were sort of getting an energy off everybody yeah, around I, you. I love people. Everything about people, I just love it. So it helps me when I paint outside too. It could tilt anyway because even the eight artists, it's they're very strong. So there is a very kind of first fierce competition. Once you got beyond the building, you freed up. I mean, have you ever painted buildings before? I have. I mean, uh, at the moment, I guess I'm most inspired by the raw organic elements of nature. Did you enjoy painting the reflection more than the building, or do I just feel like you did? I always enjoy painting reflections. So yes, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that the first half would be tricky and there wouldn't be much on the canvas, but it did get to a stage where they're obviously happy with it very late on in, in the uh, four hours. These are both very accomplished paintings, but both very different. Is one your style that you use from painting from life and the other from photograph? Um, I think really they're the same style. I paint quite realistically and, and very bold colours. But this feels, it, it, it lives of its unfinishedness, in a sense. It, it, would it become more and more finished if you had time? Yes. If I was to work on that for a couple more weeks, then I would get into the nitty-gritty, into the detail. I'm curious, because you're clearly not very happy with it. You're not as happy with it as you are with something like that. I think, actually, the more I look at this now, the more happy I become. Yes. It's taken a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think they understood the fact that I really had a rush on, couldn't complete the painting. But I think, actually, they found some positives in that. So I was quite relieved at that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. With your short list, I think I prefer what they did today, all three of them, yeah. with what they actually submitted. Yeah. Yes, I think yes, we, I we think all do too. We do, yeah. Today, they're allowed to break the rules that they've set for themselves. A lot of people get a great deal out of that. But I don't think Jamie's quite come to terms with what he made today yet. Yeah, I but... also understand what is compelling Jamie to finish his paintings always to this high finish. It might be quite interesting for him to think, actually, it's, it's something I do because I've always done it and people think it's great. Actually, maybe art is found in a, in a slightly different style. I think that applies to Tim as well. I think the journey he's made from the painting I love very much, which is the great Welsh slate cliffs, um, he's moved a long way from there. Yeah. yeah, I think all three finalists did as well because Adi Banjay was saying that he was responding to the time constraint and the people. You know, he, he sort of sprinted a marathon. It was so impressive. So we're providing a service. So I, I suspect you have your winner. Was it a unanimous decision in the end? I think it was. I think it was. We, it was, yeah. Pretty clear. Adabanji, Tim, Jamie, congratulations to each one of you. Your work has really impressed the judges. But as you know, only one of you can go forward. Yes, and the judges have made their decision. They felt that the person that they are sending through to the semi final has inventively adapted their style to create an unconventional and evocative work. And that person is... Jamie Hageman. I'm thrilled for Jamie because I, I think he deserves to go through on this occasion. It's not athletics or sports. You don't win because you were first across the line. It's all down to the judges and what they look for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've gained belief that I can paint really quickly and do something that is a pretty decent finished painting, I suppose, and that I can paint something other than mountains.